The details of this case are disturbing. A young girl raped when she was just 11 years old and impregnated by her mother's live-in boyfriend, William Spencer. He was convicted in 2016 and is currently serving a 30-year sentence in the Montana State Prison for the rape. But that girl, who's now a young woman, says that's not enough. There was no hiding that she was raped and had to have a child. But she had the courage now to come forward and say, what can be done about it? So she's suing the Montana Department of Health and Human Services for the damages done to her health and well-being and to her future. Her attorney, Larry Henke, says this is why. Child Protective Services first cared for the victim in 2008 when she was seven and her brother was five. In 2011, the biological mother got custody of the kids and they went to live with her and live-in boyfriend William Spencer. Attorney Larry Henke pointed out in court documents that Spencer was already known to the Department of Public Health at the time because he was investigated for molesting his biological daughter in 2004. In February of 2014, DPHHS was informed by doctors at Riverstone Health that the girl was pregnant at the age of 12. She was returned home. His involvement with her living situation was more than a red flag. It, it was uh, painfully obvious that that's probably the first place they should have started. In March of 14, family members reported concerns about Spencer multiple times, that he had raped her, that she was sleeping in his bed, and that he continued to assault her. In April, the Department of Public Health interviewed the girl. They noted at the time that, quote, the victim was not cooperative and there was no further investigation. And I don't think the agency exercised it, the standard of care that it is required to have by simply overlooking a 12-year-old pregnant girl because she won't talk about how she got impregnated. The baby was born and then what happened? Well, the child was born, I believe, on May 14th, 2014. And the agency still returned her to the home of the rapist. Reports against Spencer continued to surface. On August 2nd, the victim's grandmother presented DPHHS with her own private DNA test, proving the now two-month-old baby was fathered by Spencer. Finally, on August 6th, DPHHS removed the girl, her baby, and her brother. How do you put a price on what was done in order to seek uh, some degree of justice in this? How do you make this right? How do you make this right is it's an impossible task. DPHHS declined to comment on the pending case. In Billings, Augusta McDonald, MTN News.